Hi everyone! Today we are going to learn how to draw creative color monsters. We just finished reading the book called Color Monsters where we learned about a monster that was all mixed up with his emotions. We also learned that different colors can represent or show different feelings or emotions. So today we are going to draw our very own monster and make it feel a certain way by adding color. You're going to need a piece of paper and something to draw with. Now I have a black permanent marker to draw with, but you could have a pencil or a pen. I also have some colors here. I have markers today, but maybe you have crayons or colored pencils. Anything works. Before we get started today with our artwork, let's first review how different colors can show different feelings. So let's look at these monsters. We have yellow for happy, blue for sad, red for angry, black for fear, green for calm, and pink for feeling love. So we know that these colors can show that our monster is feeling a certain way. But what else can show that our monsters are feeling a certain way? Hmm. Well, let's look at their faces. The happy monster is smiling, so we know it's happy. The sad monster is frowning. It has sad eyes, sad eyebrows, and a sad face, but sad frown. So the facial expressions, as we like to call them, those facial expressions can also show how you feel. When you're sad, you're probably frowning. When you're happy, you're probably smiling. So keep that in mind as we get started with our monsters. I want you to choose an emotion for your monster. So think about the emotion that you want. I think I'm going to make my monster angry. So let's get started designing and drawing our monsters. I created this idea sheet for you all if you need some inspiration for your monster's body, arms, legs, and face. So you can see here I have five different body shapes for you to choose from, but boys and girls, if you don't like any of these, you can always come up with your own body shape. I've decided to go with an oval body shape for my monster, so with my magic finger, I am first practicing drawing a big oval and I'm making sure that this oval is nice and large because I want my monster's body and my monster to have emphasis in my artwork. I want my monster to look like it's the most important part of my whole entire drawing. Okay, so after practicing with my magic finger, I went in with my marker and drew that large body shape. Next up, the arms. Our monster needs some arms. Hmm. Here are some different ideas for arms for your monster. I kind of like these wavy, wiggly line arms, but maybe you have different ideas. Maybe your arms are zigzag lines, or maybe your monster's arms are made up of different shapes. Be creative, boys and girls. So I'm thinking because I want my monster to be angry, I think I'm going to put my monster's wavy arms above his head to make it look like he is very upset and flailing his arms in the air. So you can see that I just drew my wavy line and I'm just going to draw another wavy line that follows that same shape. Just like that. Remember, your arms don't have to be wavy. Yours could look different than mine. Be creative. And finally, I drew a little claw. It almost looks like a frog claw or something. It's kind of like a monster hand. So I'm going to draw another arm that's similar on the other side of my monster because usually arms are symmetrical. They're the same on both sides. However, because we're designing our own monsters, I guess you could have two different arms. That would be fine with me. Maybe your monster even has five arms. It's totally up to you, friends. I want you to use your imagination. So right now my monster looks like an egg with arms. So let's add, aha, some legs. Hmm, these are some different ideas for legs. We have these frog-like legs, these 
strange looking curved line legs. So you can use these for inspiration for your monster or you could come up with your own legs and I think I'm actually going to draw some legs that were not on my paper there. I'm just going to draw two curved lines and two curved lines. I'm giving my monster two legs though again you could give your monster four legs or one leg or no legs. It's up to you. And I'm drawing these big clown shoes on my monster's feet. That kind of makes my monster look silly and not so angry, but that's okay. Okay, we have legs, arms, and a body. What's missing? Hmm, what did we talk about that helps to show emotion besides color? Oh yes, our monster's face. So I have drawn some ideas for eyes and mouths for your monster. Remember, if your monster is feeling sad, maybe you want to have sad, droopy eyes. If your monster is feeling the emotion of love, maybe you even draw heart-shaped eyes to show that your monster is feeling love. But my monster is not feeling love. My monster is feeling angry. So I'm going to use these angry eyes as an idea for my monster. So. I could draw them inside of my monster's body, but I'm going to think outside of the box, boys and girls. I am drawing a monster so I can be as creative as I want. So I'm going to draw my monster's eyes on antennas. That's right, my monster is going to have these long body parts that support my monster's eyeballs. So I just drew two curved lines on one side where one eye will be and two curved lines on the other side. And I'm still going to go with these angry looking eyes. I don't know how they're going to look on the ends of these antenna, but I'm going to try it. So I'm drawing a diagonal line that goes towards the middle of my paper and a curved line that touches the bottom of those two lines that I just drew. Okay, doing that again on this side. And boys and girls, I just have two eyes here, but your monster might just have one eye. Your monster might have a hundred eyes. That would take a long time to draw. Maybe your monster has three or 10 eyes. It's up to you. So I drew these two little half circle shapes and I'm drawing smaller half circle shapes on the inside there for the pupils and iris part of my monster's eyes. Now I'm leaving a little white area that I'm not coloring in on the pupil to make it look like a realistic reflection. All right, now that I've drawn my monster's eyes, it's time to move on to the mouth. Because my monster is feeling angry, I want my monster's mouth to say, I'm angry. So I'm going to draw a big, curved line, almost like an upside down letter U or a rainbow shape, and a straight line at the bottom. This is my monster's angry mouth. If you are drawing an angry monster and you don't want to draw this mouth, you can always come up with your own. Remember to match your monster's mouth and eyes to the way that it's feeling. Do your best. Okay, I added some sharp triangle teeth because my monster is angry and so I want it to look scary and angry. So now what I'm going to do is color in the area behind my monster's teeth. That will make them really stand out and look pearly white. I sped this part of the video up so you don't have to watch me color in slow motion. got a mouth. My monster really does look angry. He looks like he's having a temper tantrum. Hmm, what else can I add to make my monster look even more angry? Huh. Oh, I know. I could add some eyebrows to my monster to make them look angry. To make angry eyebrows, I'm going to make these diagonal lines above my monster's eyes. I'm 
now coloring them in. And I know, my monster's eyebrows are floating above his eyes. That doesn't make sense, but hey, I'm using my creative artistic abilities here. So just go with it. Okay, now my monster looks really, really mad. I think it's time to add some more details though. I'm going to dress my monster up. That's right, I'm going to clothe my monster. So I'm drawing two curved lines underneath my monster's mouth for a belt and some pants. I'm drawing a little rectangle shape with a smaller rectangle shape in the middle for a belt buckle. So boys and girls, you don't have to add pants to your monster if you don't want. You could add something else. Maybe your monster is holding a purse, or maybe your monster has a hat on, or has some other type of clothing accessory on. It's up to you what you want to add onto your monster. So let's take a look at those colors again and how they show emotions or feelings. Yellow for happy, blue for sad, red for angry, black for scared or fear, green for calm and peaceful, and pink for love. Because my monster is angry, I am bringing out this red marker and I am going to color in my monster's body this angry looking red color. Again, if you don't have markers, boys and girls, just use whatever coloring supply that you have at home. Okay, time to go in with my red marker. I'm just going to color in my monster's body that is not clothed. So the top half of my monster, my monster's eyes, the antenna parts of my monster's eyes, I mean, and my monster's arms. Make sure that you color your monster in carefully. You can see that I outlined all of the different parts that I'm coloring here with my marker before I started coloring, just so that I have an edge there. If I make a mistake, I won't go over my lines. I'm just finishing up here. Okay, my monster's red, angry body is all colored in. I can tell that my monster looks angry. Now, I'm going to add some texture to my monster. You don't have to do this. Maybe your monster feels smooth. Maybe your monster is hairy like mine. It looks like my monster really needs a shave. Okay, so I'm just adding these little dashed lines all over my monster's body that isn't covered by clothing to show that my monster has some hairs. And I'm just adding these all over the red parts of my monster, these little hairs. I'm going to continue coloring in my monster here. Next, I'm going to color in my monster's eyes and I'm going to go in with a blue color I think blue and red look really nice together. But remember, blue represents sadness. And usually when you're angry, you're also a little bit sad because no one likes being angry. So I'm adding some sadness in my monster's eyes. Okay, time for those styling monster pants. I'm going to first color in my monster's pants green and then decorate my monster's belt and shoes. Okay, boys and girls, you've got to admit, this is one styling monster. Let's add some details to our monster's shoes. If your monster doesn't have shoes, you don't have to do this part. But I'm going to add some shoelaces by drawing little X's and a little bow. I'll show you a little bit slower on the next shoe. 
I draw the letter X, the letter X, the letter X, a loop, another loop, almost like bunny ears, and then two curved lines at the bottom. And that makes it look like my monster has shoelaces. I want to make my monster's shoes blue, so I'm coloring those shoes in this nice light blue. Wow, he's ready to dance. So, I can tell that my monster is angry because of his red color and his facial expression. That angry mouth, those angry eyes, those flailing angry arms, and even those eyebrows. So boys and girls, next, what I'm going to do is add a background to my monster. Now you do not have to add a background. You could stop here and be done. But I think adding a background behind my monster will make this picture come to life. So what I'm going to do is draw two horizontal lines, one on either side of my monster's body. That makes it look like my monster is in front of the ground line or the horizon line that I just drew. So now this area down here will be the floor area and above it will just be, it could be a sky or it could be the wall if my monster is indoors. I am making my monster indoors. I'm actually drawing a checkerboard floor for my monster to be standing on. So I drew some horizontal lines and now some vertical lines. Boys and girls, if you are drawing a background, you do not have to draw the same thing that I'm drawing. You could do a pattern in your background. You could draw something else. You could draw your monster doing something like surfing or shopping or talking on the phone or meditating or whatever you want your monster pick to be doing. I thought my monster looked a little too angry and too fancy, so I thought I might make a little dance floor for my monster. My monster just needs to dance it out to get rid of that angry feeling. That's a really good way to stop feeling angry, is just to dance. Okay, so I am coloring my floor in checkerboard pattern. Boys and girls, this is a little bit advanced for your age group, but if you want to try to follow along with me, you can. If you wanted to do a checkerboard floor pattern and try to challenge yourself, that's totally fine. Or you could do something else. So what I'm doing here is I'm just marking which ones I will have black and white. I'm going to be making this a pattern. So each square will be either black or white. And I'll show you what that might look like in just a moment. Okay, so a checkerboard pattern goes back and forth between black and white. Black and white. The next row will be white, black, white, black, and so on. And then black, white, black, white, white, black, white, black. And you kind of have to guess on where the squares are behind your monster. That's why I said this pattern is really challenging. Um, so if you don't want to do checkerboard patterns, that is okay. But if you want to challenge yourself, give it a try. I finished up my checkerboard pattern on the floor. My monster is dancing out his frustration. I'm not going to add anything else behind my monster on the upper part of my drawing, just because this took quite a long time. So there is my completed monster drawing. I can tell that my monster is angry because of his facial expression, his eyebrows, and his color, which is red. So boys and girls, I hope you had fun with this project. I cannot wait to see your monsters. And remember to follow all of the directions on Seesaw. I'm going to have you talk about your monster, your monster's color, and how your monster is feeling. Have fun!